फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार जय जगन्नाथ मु आपण मानको आज नेकरी आसी छी कर्निंग म्यूजियम ऑफ ग्लास एठी आपण देखिबे कोन सब देखा जाउ छी केमिति ग्लास रे विभिन्न प्रकार आइटम तयारी होउ छी फर्नेस रु हॉट ग्लास बाहर उची छी आ सेथुर केमिति बेलून टाइप रो ग्लास तयारी होउ छी आसंतु देखिबा ग्लास के छी तयारी करे डिजाइन नेबे तयारी करे ई ऑफ कॉस्ट रे मिलु छी मते लागु छी ई ऑफ कॉस्ट देखिया 36 डॉलर 36 डॉलर आगे रे स्टेज टा छी सो स्टेज रे सोने आसीबे डेमोनस्ट्रेट करिवे आम सब वेट कर इन्स्ट्रुमेंट सब कहुई डिजाइन रट ग्लास सब मेक करेंगे सब इन्स्ट्रुमेंट अच्छे पूरा इंटरेस्टिंग जिन पाविलियन सब बस आम बस मस्त लगे गोटे नुआ एक्सपीरियस आज ना कि आसीगले सब या देखिए कौन गोटे जिनस निटा को रूप कले और सब स्टार्ट करदे हिटर टा पूरा हट ग्लास आम कि शुण So she's cradling the glass into a wet wooden block right now. You can see the steam forming in that tool. We need to make sure that they're kept wet. It is giving getting to be a little cooler outside and I do love a campfire, but we try to avoid those here in the hop shop. So if we took dry wood up against that uh, hot glass, we would have a campfire right there at, at the bench. But if we add water to these wooden tools, then a layer of steam forms inside. That way, they don't end up sticking, they don't end up catching on fire, we don't end up leaving wood ash on our surface. Instead, it rides on that little layer of steam and gives us a really nice, smooth surface on our glass. Are you going back in for another one? Fantastic. So, going real big here today. She's going back in for a third gather. We also refer to the act of as being a gathering process. So, she's going for her third or uh, three gather piece. Now these are stainless steel pipes. 
that dissipates its heat quite nicely, but occasionally we like to cool them off a little bit more. So we can use this water fountain designed just to cool glass pipes there. And this will just make it more ergonomic, allow her to hold the, the pipe a little closer to that uh, hot glass. It'll just make it feel a, less, a little less weight. If you've ever tried to pull that jug of milk out of the refrigerator that was in the back, it's really far away from you, it feels really heavy. But if you bring it close to you, it doesn't feel so heavy. So ergonomically, we try to choke up on those pipes and hold them fairly close. But you'll notice there's a dark and a shiny area there, and she knows where it is potentially hot, and so we train ourselves to not grab that pipe in any place that it's concerning. Now there is a possibility of being burned, and the glass or the metal will be the most frequent way of getting burned in the hot shop. But where she's holding is very comfortable, probably not even as warm as a mug holding a nice hot cup of coffee. And we also have a newspaper in addition to the wooden blocks, another wooden product essentially that allows us to shape. The wooden blocks are very rigid, so they're pretty limiting. We only use those at the very beginning to help reinforce that even gather shape. And then we gravitate towards that newspaper because it's nice and flexible. We can conform it to the shape of our hand and use it to help shape, cool, and center our glass. We do need to make sure that it's uh, more than one sheet, so like five to seven sheets of newspaper. That's really an ideal, but each gaffer has a preference. Some people like them thicker, some people like them thinner, some people like to fold them in thirds, some people like to fold them in quarters. There really is a personal preference, um, just like many tools. But our biggest tool, it's heat. Without heat, we could not shape the glass. So we go back and forth between the workbench, where we do a lot of the shaping, and the reheating chamber, which remelts our glass as needed. We also need to make sure that the glass doesn't get cold in any one part, otherwise it could start to thermally shock and crack. Have you heard that term before, thermal shock? If you're not familiar, you might still have experienced it. If you've ever taken ice and thrown it into a warm beverage, you hear it pop and crack. That's the ice trying to expand with the intense heat of whatever is in that cup. And so it can't hold itself together, so it breaks to relieve that stress of trying to change. And we're working with a soda lime glass here today. And soda lime glass is notorious for expanding and contracting as it heats and it cools. So if any one part of this gets too cool and starts to shrink unevenly, then it'll end up cracking. So not only do we go back to that furnace to make things hot enough to change them, but also just to make sure that nothing got too cold as we were working. If you want to make a glass that's less susceptible to that thermal shock, you can just change its chemistry. Does anybody know what glass is made out of by chance? Shout it out if you know. Sand, excellent. So sand, and then we, for our glass, we add soda ash and limestone. Soda ash being the flux, it lowers melting temperatures to about 4,000 degrees is what solid uh, sand, silica sand would melt at, but our glass melts closer to 2,000 degrees because of the addition of that soda lime. If we want to make a glass that doesn't expand and contract, we can add boron to it, and that would create a borosilicate glass. That's brand, brand names like Pyrex. So that's why you can end up putting that into the oven or in science class, putting a burner onto that uh, beaker. That, so, that um, borosilicate glass is, doesn't expand and contract as it heats and it cools. So change your chemistry, you can change that glass quite drastically in what it can accomplish. We're often asked about leaded glasses as well. Lead is an addition, is a version of a flux that can be added. And by adding lead to the glass, it gives it a, a clarity and also a softness when it's at room temperature. So it's very easily carved and polished into those beautiful facets that we've all become familiar with. So making big bubbles here, using a pair of jacks to squeeze in a tight constriction line at the very top. This will help us break this glass later on, moving it from the blowpipe. Without these jack lines, there's usually catastrophic breaking involved in trying to remove your piece from the hot iron. It's one of the most common things for beginners. They get so excited, they finally get glass on the end of the iron and know how to cut it. So you'll notice she never stops turning. There's little subtle movements that she's doing as she's working. Glass making isn't really all about what you can make. It's kind of what you can fix. 
changes are happening constantly. Maybe the glass is a little hotter or the furnace is a little hotter or colder than it was even an hour ago. So you have to acclimate to current conditions on a constant basis. And there's little wiggles, little adjustments, working with gravity to help us keep things on center. That's really what takes years of experience to learn how to do. Recognize those telltale signs and be able to harness the natural tendencies of this material to be able to have it do what you want. You always have the know-how way longer before you have uh, the ability to do so with your hands. So it takes lots of practice and lots of dedication to really get to be a good glass blower. We say at least five years of consistent working to become a beginner. And most glass blowers are learning in universities these days. There's some workshops over there. Anybody doing a make your own project today? A couple of you, fantastic. Great opportunity. So just a, and so it is that university program, the public access classes that are pushing um, the artistic medium forward and giving most of us uh, our ability to blow glass. That's big bubble. This is great. This is going to show you just how fluid, not too cold so it doesn't crack, but you can just wind that glass right onto the bottom. So fluid when it's this hot. But she's got a few seconds to be able to push that into shape, creating a nice foot on the bottom of that round bubble. She's going to be making a big fluted bowl for you here today. So right now that is forming the foot of that bowl. Looks like she's going to get fancy using her tweezers to twist a little texture into the surface of that glass. I always say glass is sort of like hot Play-Doh. You can pinch it, squish it, you can add textures, you can take bits and pieces and add them together to create all kinds of structures and objects. The advantage over Play-Doh, we can make a hollow bubble to start with. So some of our forms, whether they're sculptural or functional, they're all going to be a combination of hollow bubbles and solid blocks of glass formed into the objects of our huge common approach to handmade glass. Finishing the bottom half when it's on the blowpipe, transferring it over onto the punty about halfway through, and then finishing out that top section. We don't want a four-foot pole stuck to our piece permanently, so we're doing a break. So that jackpot I was talking about, this is going to be where we break that glass along the top. We also want to remove this putty at the end of the process. So by attaching them a little cooler, it adds a memory of that slight chill, and we'll be able to hopefully sever it at the end without leaving much more than a scar mark. Timing and temperature is very critical in this stage. So using a little bit of um, air to cool and then a little water to thoroughly shock right along that line. Beautifully done. Let's give him a big round of applause. So often when you're learning to blow glass, that is the most catastrophe ridden air time. You go back into that intense heat of the furnace and it tries to heat up really quickly and expand. So that can also crack your glass. You can go both directions. We're using it to flatten or cool the glass. If it's just hovering somewhere, all we're doing is putting that wood paddle between your hand and 2,000 degrees. So it's just a shield to help protect the gaffer, make the process more comfortable, and is a nice thing for an assistant to do to aid the, the gaffer to be more comfortable. Yeah. It's also the reason why she's wearing that Kevlar sleeve. This is all just radiant heat coming off of that furnace, or off that glass. So using a little bit of protection. A lot of people wonder why we don't wear gloves, if it seems simply, and not over protect yourself with a lot of heavy gear that makes the process a lot more challenging. Now there are exceptions to that rule, and you can wear gloves to be able to, uh, what is it? She can just walk around that piece of shield. Is checking the size of the oven because if uh, we make it, we're going to be able to fit in there. Are there any other questions that might have popped up? Yes? Yeah, colors. I forgot to mention that. So we're working all clear, but if we wanted to add color, we would have had to do that when we were doing all the gathering, that early stages when the glass is hot and molten. We roll it through these little chips of broken colored glass called frit. 
These are made by adding metal oxides into the raw materials of glass. So that silica, sand, soda, ash, and limestone, we could add things like iron to give us green glass, cobalt to give us blue glass, manganese to give us purple. But it couldn't be added at this late stage. The glass wouldn't be hot enough to get those little chips. Force will start winging that glass away from center, giving us much more flare. This is a great example of how we control our form through temperature and how harnessing the natural tendencies of that material will uh, really show off the skill of the glass maker. There we go, round and round. And holding it down, letting it ruffle on its own. Very nice. So it did have a little contact there, so it didn't turn out to be a perfect round hole, but I think that's a pretty exciting piece, don't you think? Thanks so much, have a great day.